How far in performance can you take vintage equipment? Okay, that's a good question from Corey in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. Corey writes, hey Paul, my question is regarding older equipment and how close they might be able to come to the performance levels of current models by upgrading various electronic parts. I have a counterpoint amplifier, which was built in the late 80s, and I really enjoyed the sound, although I think I could be even better. It's a hybrid design, like your BHK amps with tubes in the front and a MOSFET output stage. I'm a fan of Mike Elliott's work. Mike Elliott was in, in, with uh, CounterPoint. And um, I recall that he used to offer updates to these amps which boosted their performance. If I were to install better modern parts such as Teflon coupling capacitors, bulk foil resistors, high-speed soft recovery diodes, and a toroidal transformer, could I obtain a level of performance that at least nudges more modern designs? Well, sure, of course you could. Uh, it, it really depends on what you're starting with. And if the question is centering around counterpoint, Mike Elliott stuff. Um, yeah, counterpoint made some great, great products, great amps, great preamps. Uh, uh, the counterpoint guys, I don't know whatever happened to them, but they they certainly made some wonderful products in their day. And yes, you could put better components in there, but but be aware that it's a crapshoot. You're going to get better sound by using better components, but that's not always the best way to go. I'll give you an example. When we design a product and we voice a product, we pay special attention to the quality of the parts that goes in and the types of parts. So, for example, and I've talked about this before, when we're using film capacitors, one could say, well, in this position, let's say it's a coupling cap, I want the very best film cap I can put in there. Now, Joe Schmuck over here says, hey, the best cap I ever heard was an oil-filled, beeswax, uh, you know, impregnated, this or that. And another guy over here says, well, you know, this Teflon one is, is the very best. They may be right in certain instances, but that doesn't make it right for every instance. So, in some cases, depending on the, what you're doing and where that capacitor is going, it, it really changes the voicing, the way that thing sounds. And so, while this may be a great cap to put in there, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to be synergistic within the design. So, I'd be a little careful. Some of the things that I would suggest is, in older designs, replacing the electrolytics. There, you would be hard pressed to go wrong. There's, there's a, um, a measurement uh, called ESR, which is equivalent series resistance. And the lower the ESR is on an electrolytic, typically, and I, I've found very few cases where this is not true, they sound better in almost all cases. So if you can find some low ESR caps, say go to the Parts Connection, one of these online sites where they sell such things, replace all the electrolytics with the same values, don't go crazy now, and make sure that they're low ESR designs. That'll bring it up to snuff, maybe even better than it was to begin with. Film caps generally don't degrade, so going to a better cap, again, it's a real crapshoot. Now, there's, that's just counterpoint. That was excellently designed products in the first place. Those boys knew what they were doing. But what about a product that isn't? So, I mean, here, this is, this is Dan's little area. This is great. I mean, look. Look at this eight-track tape of Loretta Lynn. I mean, how old is that, right? You're not going to be able to do much with that. Or, or this, whoop, sorry about that. Destroying Dan's area. Or look at this beauty. Tell me that isn't just amazing. <laughs> <laughs> it's an, uh, what is it? An RCA Victor 45 RPM record player. That is just classic. I mean, I just adore that. There's, like an old car, you could restore that. You could make it something cool. You could make it perform better than it ever did with modern parts and electronics and a little bit of know-how, spit and polish, yeah, you could do that. But at the end of the day, 
even like an old car, you're still going to have just a great old car. And if that's what you want, if that has some kind of nostalgic value to you, go for it. Absolutely. I, 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 and I've told people this before. You can see one on my desk. I used to lust after a 63 split window Corvette Stingray. Well, as much as I loved the lines of that car and what it represented to me as a 17-year-old as a kid when my cousin Don had one, Today, if I were to go out and, and spend the bazillion dollars to buy one of those things, well, it still is cool. It, it's still a piece of crap. It's essentially a Chevy truck, you know, that's going to rumble down the road. And, it, you know, it's, and, and there's, there's not much you can do to that thing to make it as good as, like, the car I currently have, which could uh, kick its ass every way from Sunday and, you know, on and on, right? So, yeah. If nostalgia is what you're into, or if you have something that was really well done, a counterpoint, a, uh, you know, maybe an old threshold, uh, a audio research piece that in its day was really spectacular and that day wasn't too long ago, go for it. Just take some of those words of advice and, and realize that it isn't all just easy. So think it through. If you have any questions, you can always email me and I'll try and help you through it. Okay, thanks. Bye-bye.